So I have a couple of things that I want to show uh, on the slide first. So as David said, uh, I'm going to show an adaptive card showcase gallery that I created. Um, I'm Derek Cash Peterson. I work at Simpraxis Consulting. I have just newly joined the PNP team, um, and I help David curate the uh, the samples for the uh, for the Aces repo, as well as do some of the code maintenance on learning pathways. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I built and why I did it. Um, so first, I wanted to really use this as an opportunity to show the art of the possible with ACES from a visual perspective. Um, and so I focused on the adaptive card layouts over functionality. So it's really it's really focused on the templates and being able to quickly and easily show someone who's maybe not so technical what you can do with ACES um, and then go on the back end and sort of build it out later. Uh, and it's available in the repo uh, with an SPPKG file. So you don't need to build anything. You can just download the file and then upload it to the gallery, uh, to, the, to the app catalog. So all the data that you're going to see in here right now, it stands alone and they're all um, JSON-based data structures. So, you know, there's no there's no backend connection to SharePoint, there's no backend connection to list, but you can certainly add that. There's a there's a services layer that helps you do that. Um, and finally, rather than reinvent the wheel from a UI perspective, I went ahead and I used the adaptive card samples gallery as my starting spot. I took some liberties um, and sort of made them a little more SharePointy uh, or added some different navigation elements, but I really used that as my my core nugget to to start with. Okay, so what's included in the in the adaptive card extensions? There's 11 different adaptive card extensions, and they're each um, it's packaged as one big bundle but um, they're all standalone. All the code for them is standalone. So I created an agenda extension, a company news, an expense report, flight itinerary, uh, a sample for forms, an image rotator, a stock ticker, a list of tasks that you can edit with, a Twitter card, a video card, and a weather card. Uh, and sort of each of these show different elements. And I tried to really focus and use different components. So some are picture, some are text, some are just um, you know the, the basic card. So I really wanted to show a, a broad spectrum of the different ones that are out there. OK, so what I'm going to show you today is um, I'm going to try to focus on the video card, as well as really look at what the different components are and how I got there. All right, so enough of that. So, um, so this is my this is my dev tenant, and this is if you can see over here on the right hand side, this is the dashboard, and um, I put all eleven of them in the right hand rail. Um, I wouldn't normally put all of them there, but I wanted to just sort of show the breadth. So there's the company news, um, which you can click on, and it shows different news items with the with an image and a short description. Uh, you can loop through different ones. Um, and I, I took some liberties from Patrick Rogers' code from the demo he did a few weeks ago um, to like and unlike different uh, different news articles, as well as provide a link to the full article. Provided the ability to sort of view different tasks and provide di different updates on that. Um, so you can come in and you can edit the task. Uh, and then reassign the data, uh, the different items, um, the exp an expense report that shows you sort of different things. It's doing some math in here to calculate all of this data, shows a running history. I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, the um, I did want to, one of the things that challenged me was dealing with form elements. So I wanted to provide a generic sample of how to deal with different form elements. So here's a sample for this with a bunch of text boxes, a multi-line text box, some numbers, a date, a date picker, a time picker, as well as some input input fields. So we've got a drop down. We've got some uh, radio buttons and check boxes, some toggles, and then some show hide functionality. So if you click the show card, it shows this card down here. You close it, and it goes away. Um, everybody loves stock tickers and and uh, weather web parts. So we've got the Microsoft stock ticker as well as the weather web part. Or sorry, I keep saying web part. Um, we've got the weather widget that will show the different weather in the different cities that you uh, that you go there. And then finally, the one I'm going to look at today is the um, is the videos. I call this one product highlights. Um, 
but it really is a video here with a title as well as a description and then the ability to click out to a different link. Um, so you can rotate through the different videos in here uh, and then play the video. Oops play the video right there in line inside the ACE. Um, and you know, I, you could use this for product imagery, you know, product videos. You could also use this for learning. So if you had a video, like a training video, you could do that as well. Um, but it really, you know, provides sort of this rotating ability, but also the ability to show video right there in the screen. So I wanted to spend a few minutes and show the how, sort of how I got from point A to point B. I know we've talked a lot about ACEs in the last few weeks. Um, but like I said, I used the samples gallery, adaptivecards.io slash samples. And you can see there's a huge number of samples in here. Um, so there's calendar reminders, there's flight itineraries, and some of these are, are where I got my inspiration. Uh, so this particular one was the product video. And so if you haven't looked at this, um, it's definitely a great place to start for, for ACEs because it gives you an opportunity to see it working and then also see the guts behind it. So they provide the data structure here, and you can see there's a lot of data in there. Um, I did take some liberties with the data and trimmed it down to just what I needed. Uh, and then the real nuts and bolts of it is the template. So you can see the different, how they're writing the template JSON in here. And I took this and I copied and pasted it into my ACE. Um, you'll also know, so this is the sample gallery. There's also the adaptive card designer, which if you don't know about it, it's a great place to, to do some work because you can click new card and you can find the item that you're looking for. And a lot of these samples are in there. Um, and so you can see it like product video. And so I added a title and a description. So you can actually see the code here. Um, you can see the code here and you can sort of drag and drop different elements in here to get it looking how you want it to look before you even bring it into your ACE. So you can do this all on the web before you even start your code. Okay, so if we look at the video, um, the adaptive card video uh, extension that I created, um, this is sort of the the extension main uh, main function. So I'm setting things up. I'm setting up logging. I'm setting up SPFX, and then I call the service layer. Um, as I said, all of this covers um, comes from static JSON, but I do have a get videos method in the service layer, which, as you can see, is just pulling the the JSON file. But you could easily use this to pull videos or data directly from SharePoint with PMPJS. Um, I am setting the collection of videos and the current index into the state. So I want it to start with the first one. If you wanted it to be random, you could just get a random number from the index uh, of the videos and then set it here. And then I have to I have to register the two cards. The first being the card right here, and the second being the um, the quick view. So looking at the card view and I click over here. So this is the card view. That card view has primary text and an image URL. Because I'm using the image card, the image card, um, I have primary text. So I'm setting it to the title of the video, and I'm setting the URL to the thumbnail of the video. The, the other thing that I'm setting is the what happens when you click on it. And that's here, that's set here. And you do that uh, by specify. So in this instance, I'm going to the quick view. So we have to use type of quick view and set the parameters of the registry ID that we're passing it to. So I'm setting that. So when you click on the on the card view, it opens the quick view. The quick view, which I'll move over here. So this would be our quick view, and you can see it's got little uh, little toggles to go back and forth. The video, the title, and then the description and the learn more link. Um, so the data object here is just the video. So it's the video object that I created in the data model. And so we're passing that. So the first thing we do when we get the data is get, the, get it out of the array from the state. So we're getting this.state.video and we're getting the current index. And then we're passing in the entire video object. We're getting the template, 
and I'll show you the template. And so again, I started this the exact same way I just showed you. I worked all of this out in the adaptive card designer. I added in the um, the forward and next buttons and so forth, and then I pulled it all over into my template here. Uh, one thing I did sort of run into is that the way the, the adaptive card designer works, it has different functions for date time formatting and stuff like that. Um, those didn't work, so I ended up doing all my date time formatting when I did like news and stuff like that in, in my quickview.ts file, and then just passed it in as a string. So you can see here, I, I set up the, um, the arrows. So in this first row, I've got the column set that has three columns in it. I've got the image type with the, uh, the SVG for the previous button. And then I have to tell it what to do when you click on it. So I'm using a select action. And it's of type action.submit. So it's a submit, you know, you're clicking on it. Um, and then I'm giving it an ID of previous and a title of previous. So this is what's going to happen. It's going to call this when I want to go back one. The next column is, uh, is where we put in the video, um, actually show the thumbnail. So we put the thumbnail video URL right here. Um, and then I also want to put in the source for the media. Um, so it's got the thumbnail URL, but it also needs the video URL. So we give it the MIME type. This is using an MP4, and then we pass in the URL. It's all in the video object that gets passed into the template. Um, and then we pass in the title and the description. And then finally, another action set. So this is another button. This time we're going to do open URL. So you can see action open URL. And this will open the link to see more to a different asset. Um, and then finally, we want the next button. And so the next button is over here. This has an SVG for the right, the right chevron, and the action submit here is next. And these are important. Um, these action submits are important because when we go back to our TS file, um, we have to tell it what to do with them when, when those are clicked. We have one on action method. So we have to get the data from the submit itself, and that's our action right here. Uh, and then we need to figure out what, what type of action it is. And so it's a submit. There's open URL action as well. So if we wanted to do something before we went to a different location, we could do that. Um, but I'm grabbing the data out of it. And then the previous and the next buttons, these really get the current state, um, the current ID of the item that we're looking at. And then we're incrementing or decrementing uh, the index based on that. And so we're getting the ID, um, we're getting the current number, we're checking. This just loops, so if you keep hitting forward and forward and forward, um, you'll end up going back to zero. So that's what this logic does right, right here. And then we're setting the ID on the state. And when the state changes, the, the layout will re-render. So we're doing that for forward and we're doing that for next. Um, and honestly, I think that is about it. Um, and so, if you are interested in downloading this sample, it's in the repo. All 11 of these come with it. Um, so you can use these as an opportunity to sort of, either sort of kickstart your stuff or show somebody an example of what it is that you can do with your ACES um, before you start writing any code. And then back awesome. to you, David. Oh, Thanks, Derek. Derek, Derek don't, 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 I will jump oh. here and ask a few questions. Yeah. Sorry, David. Um, sure. Just to give things um, add additional context, don't stop sharing. Um, I want to ask a few things. So there was a good good question actually from Tim, Tim Duncan related on, do we have a managed metadata picker uh, for the controls in the forms? And, and the thing is, these are not really controls. So just to be clear on what we're doing here, SharePoint framework works as an orchestrator between, but then the UX layer is always rendered by the adaptive cards. And adaptive card is just a, it's basically a drop down or it's a selection thing or in the form if you push out the form sample, Eric. Um, so there's a certain set of card uh, controls and all of that, but there is no managed metadata control because adaptive card is not managed metadata aware because adaptive card is more, it's it's not a service aware. It's it's basically a, a data type aware. But of course, we would be able to fill in, for example, in a drop down or in a radio box or in a checkbox, these values from the managed metadata from the SPFX side. So we're basically then building those values and the content in the template as part of the SPFX code. 
So just to kind of clarify on that one, because I think one of the things, especially Derek, this is absolutely awesome sample. But as we as we always show about that after card, we always like, hey, here's the design and here's the design uh, template and here's the content uh, JSON, and then they smash them together. And then quite often people ask the question, well, but but my content is dynamic. How do I make that happen? <laughs> yeah. So um, it, 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 that's actually pretty interesting. So um, that's actually a different sample. Um, let Sorry me to put sort you of in get, a spot to direct, yeah. but I think it, it's it's super important <laughs> to show that because it's, it is, of course, it's not like you're using yeah. a static content. Content is always right. dynamic. So what I'm doing, this isn't a direct correlation, Vesa, but it will it will actually show an example of it. Um, it's not. Is it this one? It's this one. Okay. So in this instance, and I'll show you the example of it. This is the this is the task one. So the task one, and I did I I pulled this together for this for this reason. Um, we can actually manipulate in code. We can manipulate the template. So um, if you, for instance, have dynamic data, if you have a list of questions or a list of things that you're reading out of SharePoint or you're listing, uh, you know, getting from the graph, you can actually get all that data. Um, so what I did here to, to pull this data in and then create these cards was actually went and I created, because this is all just sort of feeds into the template as JSON. I ended up creating, I'll go down to the template method. Um, let me close this. So you can read the template in directly um, and make it an object in your in your TS file. And then you can manipulate the different aspects of it. So in this instance, I pulled together, I, I, in, I imported the template, and then I created an array. And inside the array, I'm pushing different objects. So a text box, a, a, a text label, an answer, a text box field. Um, a date picker. So this is a little different, but if you could imagine um, each one of these objects right here, if we go up, actually has the properties that it would need if it was just if you just wrote it out in the JSON. So it's got an ID, it's got a value, and it's got a type. And so if you want to dynamically create your template, you can absolutely do that in your template method. And then in this instance, what I did was I just grabbed, I took the template, I grabbed the body, and I grabbed the first element in the body, and there happens to be a column in there. Um, and then I appended that, this uh, array of, of items into these items. So it gets sort of stuffed in there dynamically. So if you could sort of use your imagination here and you could go out and you could read a bunch of questions that have text boxes or radio buttons or what have you from the graph or from a SharePoint list, you could then stuff them in here. Um, if you want a different, um, if you're interested in a different uh, sort of real working example, uh, Julie and I built the COVID attestation app, which we demoed in this call a few months ago. And that's actually doing exactly that for the ACE. Um, so I can post the, the link to that repo and you can see how we did it there. Excellent. Thanks, Derek. And sorry, sorry for putting you on a spot because, because no it's just that we understand how we built the, the content and a template dynamically based on the content what we have, because that's the key here. The SharePoint framework is not responsible of the UX, it's responsible for the so-called orchestration yes. between the data and the adaptive card UX, because adaptive cards, they need to be filled in and coordinated by some object. Uh, is it a bot or in this case, it's, it's of course a SharePoint framework component which is behind of the scenes working here. So really, really good, really awesome stuff. And thank you, thank you uh, for showcasing how it's actually being done. So really good stuff. All right, cool, thanks. David. Join. Excellent. Sorry, back to you. Sorry for yeah. mixing and jumping in. No, no, so. this is great. We we're, we're ahead of schedule and uh, it was good clarity and everything. So fantastic work. Uh, and, and just to emphasize, these are all free 11 amazing aces. I mean, enough to just jumpstart you initially. Uh, so don't don't hesitate to take advantage of them. And again, if you have any questions, they are in the repo, so you can post issues with questions, and we will be there to assist you. Mm -hmm.